Hello, and welcome to Nimitz UFO and others, Real vs. Real, Episode 5. Wow, I can't believe it's almost been a year since I made one of these videos, but with the paranormal world, supposed evidence doesn't seem to be as frequent as you may think. For those of you who are new to this series, I take recent videos and photos of alleged paranormal activity and try to figure out if it is real, as in factual, or real, as in a movie, meaning fake. While my channel is all about the paranormal and unexplained things in life, I always strive to keep the topic subjective by providing what information there is to be had, all the while avoiding outright fakes. I enjoy providing you all with the information in a non-sensationalizing way, and by the end, allow you, my dear viewers, to decide for yourself what you think about the topics. Due to this, I try to keep my personal opinions out of my videos. However, with this series, I allow myself to open up and give my perspective on things. With this series, normally I try to focus on one topic, but with today's video we have four entries to look at, covering a range of subjects from ghosts, to UFOs, to even cryptids. So at this point, I have drugged this out long enough, so let's look at the photos and footage. Photobombed Let's start off with an odd one, but at the same time, a very questionable one. According to the story, this photo was taken in 2011 by the mother of, oh, I know I'm going to butcher this name, Rhinais Trelfa, where she and her family were enjoying a quiet picnic at the Dovestone Reservoir near Manchester, England. Once, I'll call her Rye for short, got home and uploaded a photo, she noticed that there was an extra hand on the wall that belonged to none of her party members. Rye and her mom looked at other photos that were taken and claimed that the one shot immediately after this one shows the hand had disappeared. Rye claims that no one extra was around them when the picture was taken. Upon further research, her and her dad found that Dovestone Reservoir had a long history of bodies being found in the water, and she claims that on that day of the photo, the body of a woman was found in the reservoir. To take this a step more, Rye claims that the hand seems to be pointing at the man in the middle, the one with the black hat and his hands in his pants, who happened to pass away in an accident a few years later. On top of that, she says mediums contacted her after she posted the image on social media and claimed the hand belonged to a woman who was connected to the father of Rye's baby. Whew, that is quite an interesting story if I do say so myself. Images like this are frequently popping up on the internet, such as this one, and this one, and even spacemen get in on the trend. The problem is that all these share the same spooky story. I didn't notice this when the picture was taken, and not a single soul was around who could have accidentally been captured. For posterity, this photo has been scrutinized. And note, it was a false perspective where the man behind the girl was not right behind her, but further down the slope, so he could have walked off during the shot. The Spaceman one, known as the Solway Firth image, stood the best scrutiny, until the man who took the photo released the other images that day, which showed his wife was there as well. Which, he originally conveniently left out that little detail of his story. As for the other image, I think the story behind it will be the same as our topic. Speaking of which, back to that one. The story behind bodies being found in the reservoir is sadly a real thing, but the same can be said for a lot of places around the world. I couldn't find a record of a woman's body being drug out the same time period, but that doesn't mean it didn't happen. Within all reason, I could see the spirits haunting this area, but I'm not thinking this is the case here. I don't know if the story behind the man dying in an accident is real, either, but people have reported things like this before to enhance their story, even though it is all false. As for the hand pointing at him, I think it is a bit of a stretch, unless it is common for people to point with their pinky fingers. If he did in fact die, being it was reportedly years after the photo, I would say that was a simple coincidence. However, I feel for the family if it is true. Now, let's get back to brass tacks. Rye claims no one was around them when the photo was taken. However, the photo says otherwise. If you look close, this ghost had its hair blowing in the breeze behind the man's shoulder. 
Not only that, but after looking into the area, I found out that the image doesn't show the full story. As you see here, on the other side of the wall is a ramp or bank extending to the water. If the family was portraying a hoax, then someone could easily have been on the other side of the wall. Many people point out the family's body positions as indicating that they were making a spot for the ghost to appear, but I'm not sure if their pose is natural or not. If the family is innocent of perpetuating a farce, then someone easily could have been below them, near the shore, and popped up at the time they were taking the photo. I do have to point out that the story does follow the common trope of, I took multiple photos, but only one has the ghost. However, those extra photos are never produced. So after all that, I'm confident in labeling this as real for now. If the family is producing a hoax, I can't be sure. Ghosts shouldn't drive. Wow, that last topic took a lot more time than I was originally thinking it would take. Anyway, moving on. These videos have been making their rounds on YouTube and social media, and it seems to show some intense crashes where vehicles seem to be just driving along and suddenly are smashed by some invisible object. These images are quite breathtaking and seem crazy to behold. This topic alone was what started this week's video as a close family member tagged me in it on Facebook. Not thinking much about it, I was later asked about what I thought was happening when I saw this family member in person. So, here we are. Reports of phantom vehicles driving around the roads isn't a new concept, as many stories have come out around the world of vehicles vanishing in thin air. As for the damage, there even are two reports of a cloaked UFO ramming vehicles as well. However, is this what is going on here? And if so, should ghosts be required to give up their license to drive once they pass the other side? As fantastic as this would be, it sadly, or maybe I should say thankfully, is right in line with the teleporting girl video that popped up a while ago. After some pretty quick investigation, I was able to find this video. So short and sweet, real. Mystery Wolf. Our next topic moves into one of my favorite genres, which is cryptids. Honestly, this story was given to me by my wife a while ago, and I sort of kept it on the back burner until I had reason to focus on it. Back on May 16th of 2018, a rancher in Denton, Montana, shot this creature when it started getting a little too close to his livestock. After getting close to the animal, the rancher was confused as to what he had killed, since it looked like a wolf, but had quite a few differences. The Montana Fish, Wildlife, and Parks organization was called in, and the mystery still remained. They too were baffled and noted how the canine teeth were too short, the front paws were too small, but the claws were too long. On top of this, the ears seemed to be just a little bit too big to fit into the wolf category, as well as the fur being wrong. The group took the body to their lab and mentioned how they hadn't heard anything about the results of the carcass since then. These images popped up everywhere in social media, with many theories being suggested, such as a wolf hybrid, an undiscovered breed of wolf, a werewolf, and I'm sure a chupacabra was brought up a couple of times. Although. I'm sure you all know I don't buy into the canine version of the Chupacabra. About a month later, the Montana Fish, Wildlife, and Parks released a statement saying that their lab results had come back and this mysterious creature was a normal dark-haired gray wolf. So this case is open and shut, right? Well, maybe not, and this is where my opinion comes into place and we may differ on viewpoints. This case bothers me as it falls into the territory of strange conveniences. Keeping in mind the game commission originally saw the creature and had no clue what it was, then a month later they literally come out and say, and I quote after lab inspection, it revealed a relatively normal looking dark brown wolf. They went as far as stating their initial confusion of what it was was due to, again I quote, the condition of the animal and the photos which seemed to show short legs and big ears. The whole report gave me an air of, of course we knew it was a wolf all along, why would you think otherwise? Here is my problem. They claim their confusion came from the creature's condition and the photos. However, this photo shows the animal in perfect condition as if it had just been shot, not 
rotting along the road. Claiming the photos messed them up doesn't fit, as they obviously had agents on the scene firsthand in rubber gloves handling the creature and comparing its paws to their hands, as well as the pen being utilized to show ear size. This practice is frequently done in paleontology and archaeology photos, with none of those experts ever being confused about the scaling of something. If the body looked like a normal wolf, then what was all this confusion about in the first place? Are we to believe that the Montana Fish, Wildlife, and Parks officers are incapable of identifying what a common wolf looks like? For me, this situation goes one of two ways. Either, for some reason, the Game Commission is covering up what this creature actually is, or they were creating the farce of a mystery animal in order to drive tourism to Denton, Montana. I will let you decide that for yourself, but as far as this goes, I have to give it an unsure marker. Navy UFO Okay, our final topic is a real strange one and showcased in a way that I always love to see. The footage that you are currently seeing is known as the USS Nimitz UFO incident, which occurred in November of 2004, just off the coast of San Diego, California. In it, very little details accompany the clip, but it seems to show a Navy pilot's perspective as he jet tails a strange UFO looking craft. Uncharacteristically, I am labeling this one early on, but do you think it is real or real? It's real. Reportedly, the video was released to the public by an intelligence officer by the name of Louis Elizondo, since he wanted to shed light on a secret defense program known as the Advanced Aerospace Threat Identification Program. This program was set up in 2007 with a $22 million budget in order to investigate UFO sightings and their threat to the United States. The program reportedly ended in 2012 after it ran out of funding. It was never classified, but information about its existence wasn't released until December 16th, 2017. Now I must mention that in some versions of this video, a business with the name To The Stars Academy of Arts and Sciences is linked to it. With the closure of the AATI program, Mr. Elizondo created a non-profit group under the previously named To The Stars Academy, with the same goals as the AATI. They aren't without scrutiny in certain sectors, but the video is real. Now with the footage. Apparently before it was captured in 2004, the USS Princeton, which was traveling with the USS Nimitz, had been tracking a mysterious aircraft on radar for two weeks. Finally, on November 14th, the strange craft appeared again, and the USS Princeton radioed to USS Nimitz, requesting that jets be scrambled to intercept the object. Commander David Fravor and Lieutenant Jim Slate piloted their two FA-18F Super Hornets to the location of the craft, but both planes were unarmed at the time. Once at the location, the men saw nothing in the sky or on their radar. When they looked down, they saw something under the water, which was making the ocean churn and bubble. Moments later, a craft that was 30 to 46 feet long, had no wings, rotors, or portholes, and looked like a bright white tic-tac, emerged and began to ascend into the sky. The craft mirrored the pilot's maneuvers, which is what the video shows, until finally it shot off and out of sight in a matter of seconds. On their way back, the pilots were contacted by the USS Princeton again, in order to tell them the object had reappeared, but was 60 miles away from its original location. Some have calculated that the object would have had to accelerate to a speed of over 2400 miles per hour to cover that distance. The pilots went to the new location, but the craft was already gone. As a note, there seems to be confusion as to which video is which, as many show this video as the Nimitz video, when in fact it is known as the Gimbal video and it was recorded on the east coast of the United States. This footage was released by the Pentagon. Many skeptics try to claim that the video footage I showed you previously was a large bird or simply a radar glitch. What do you think? As I end this video, I always enjoy our entries of real versus real as they are quite fun. Many times I don't know what to expect when I find these topics to discuss and maybe one day I can present something that is the holy grail of paranormal evidence to you. In the meantime, it does allow us to become a little bit critical of evidence, but at the same time, 
having a good time of it. As usual, if you feel differently than I do about anything I previously showcased today, that is perfectly fine, as this video serves only as my personal view. If you noticed something that I didn't, please feel free to inform me in the comments below. Recently I mentioned the idea of providing merchandising for purchase to you my viewers, and I was quite overwhelmed with the positive response I received. When I mentioned this, I alerted you all to the fact that I had already ordered a few products just to see the quality of work being done. I am happy to say that everything that I have received looks real good, and now I have business cards as well. I posted these images on my social media. I will be providing these items shortly, but I need to set up a store and someone to handle the orders. As soon as this is all ready, I'll be letting you all know. If you haven't yet done so, please consider subscribing to my channel for similar content to this, and as always, I would greatly appreciate it if you could share my videos with someone who enjoys this type of genre. With that, be safe, and I'll see you in the next one. Later.